I am going to cover a shoulder mobility slash stability sequence that is appropriate for people who do not currently have shoulder pain. The shoulder joint is quite complex. So when we think of what allows us to raise our arm overhead, we typically think of the spot where the upper arm or the humerus slides into the scapula, which is the glenohumeral joint. Now, if you take your hand at your collarbone and you slide it to where that collarbone meets the sternum and you rotate your arm, you'll notice that there's movement in that collarbone area. And then if you keep your hand at that collarbone and you lift the arm overhead, you'll notice that there's movement at that collarbone area. So this spot right here, your, chromo, uh, your sternoclavicular joint where your sternum meets your clavicle, allows the arm to go overhead. Conversely, the spot right back here, the scapula, makes up a joint with the clavicle called the acromioclavicular joint, which is located right over here. It allows the arm to go overhead. And the scapula meets the thoracic part of your spine at the scapular thoracic joint, and that allows the scapula to move. And if you put your hand on your scapula, this requires a bit of shoulder mobility, but you can do it from underneath the armpit area and you lift the arm overhead, you'll feel that the scapula moves as well. So the ability to lift our arm isn't just based on what's happening right through this shoulder joint, this area that we think, it's based on these other components, both in the front of the body and the back of the body. And how well we do that depends on balance. It also depends on the position of our spine. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways to put some of these pieces together. And while it might not always look like shoulder mobility, all of those pieces play into allowing us to do this movement of lifting the arm. So to start, I'm going to have you go ahead and lie down. Ground your feet. So your feet are about hip distance apart. And I want you to take your hands up so your palms are facing towards your feet. As you exhale, let the left arm reach overhead as the right arm comes down towards the floor. And as you do that, let's stay here for a moment and breathe. I want you just to notice if that left arm is straight so you can go ahead and look at it. And I want you to notice if you're feeling any strain in this position. If you are, place the hand on either a book or a pillow back there. Finally, I want you to look and see if that wrist is really close to your head so that you can't even see it or if it's in line with the shoulder. So it should be about shoulder level. Now take your arms back to center as you inhale and then as you exhale let the arms swap. Same thing, just observe. You might notice there's a difference in the range of motion on the sides or you might notice that you have a better sense of where one arm is versus the other. So before you look to see where the right arm is, just kind of see if you can tell based on what you feel. So see if you can tell how far away the right wrist is or if it's in line with the shoulder or if it's close to the head or if the elbow is bent. And then, once you've established those things and you've looked and you've checked, go ahead and inhale, take the arms back to center. Exhale, swap the hands again. This time, press the back of the left hand into the floor as you press the right hand into the floor. And see if you can avoid using excess tension anywhere else. So we're generating this force down with the left hand and down with the right hand by using the muscles in our shoulders. Take one more breath here. So we're going to hold here about three breaths. As you inhale, take the arms back to center. And as you exhale, swap them. Go ahead and press the right hand down. Press the left hand down. Try to make sure the hands are equal distance away from the body and they're aligned with the shoulders. Inhale, take them back to center. Exhale, swap. Breathing smoothly and completely. Inhale back to center. Exhale, swap. Last time, breathing. Inhale back to center. From here, you're simply going to turn your palms so they face each other. And I want you to pay attention to this area, this area of your shoulders that meets your neck. And I want you to see if you can turn the pinky sides of the hands in by rotating the upper arms 
and just noticing the space that that creates in your neck. So we're relaxing some of those uh, neck muscles that tend to hold our shoulders in this up and forward position, which doesn't give us access to the balance that we're looking for. So go ahead and rotate the arms. Now keeping this position, so your thumbs, right, are pointing out at about a 45 degree angle from your body. Inhale, take both arms overhead. So you're creating this Y. If you were at a wedding, it would be the YMCA song. Exhale back to center. Inhale, take your arms overhead. Exhale back to center. Stay with this pattern for three more repetitions and just notice the sensation that's occurring both in your shoulder and in your shoulder blades, that bit, those big muscles, the big, sorry, bones on the back of the body. See if you can feel them rising as you bring the arms overhead and then returning to center or returning to a more neutral position as you bring your hands back to center. One more there. From here, you're gonna go ahead and turn over onto your hands and knees. And you're gonna set yourself up so your wrists are directly under your shoulders. Now from here, you're going to, we're not gonna worry too much about arm position yet, we will in a minute. Take a nice inhale through your nose. As you exhale out your mouth, I want you to start pushing the floor away and rounding your upper back. So by pushing the floor away, we're broadening the shoulder blade region. Take an inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Pushing the floor away. Taking two more breaths here. Inhale. Feeling the breath fill that middle back area. Exhale. One more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Go ahead and relax back to center. Sit back on your heels. If this is comfortable for you, if it's not, then go ahead and you can sit on a block or you can sit in a cross-legged position. Gaze straight ahead. And you're going to make some shoulder circles that are purely shoulder circles with the right arm. So you're going to lift the arm. You're not going to let the shoulder elevate, right? We're moving just the shoulder, just the upper arm, I should say. You're going to rotate the hand back at the top of the motion. And then you're very slowly going to lower it down. There's a couple of things that are going to want to happen here. You're going to want to rotate with your torso. And I want you to see if you can keep that torso stable. So you're moving just at the upper arm. You're isolating the movement. Again, to this femoral joint, which is allowing all of these other things to move. If you're put your hand on your sternoclavicular break that place where your collarbone meets the um, sternum, you feel movement there as well. Go ahead and switch sides. Torso stays stable. Bring the arms up, around, and down. And again, see if you can isolate the motion, keeping the eyes straight ahead. And notice if there's any difference between the sides. So the beauty of doing work like this is we can start to put together where there might be differences. So you're doing about five per side. And you're gonna come into a hands and knees position. Now what I want you to do is you're gonna take your left hand right around the upper right arm. You're gonna very gently encourage the skin of the right arm to rotate out. You're gonna feel that that slides the shoulder away from the ear and it starts to get you to hug the spot in your armpit in. It's like you're holding a pen in the armpit. And then once you have that set, your shoulder should be just right about over your wrist. You can do the same thing with the other arm. You can use the hand to help encourage. And you should feel a broadness in your upper back. So what you don't want is for the scapula to pull off the back, right? This is not gonna give us a good, an, a good position between the scapula and that thoracic spine. So we are keeping the scapula on the back by lifting the breastbone away from the floor a little bit. Maintain that position. You're either gonna come into a push-up position or you're gonna keep your knees down, whatever you prefer. And I want you just to make some circles with the shoulder blades. So we're moving the shoulder blades, controlling the motion, taking one more there, relaxing down, gazing a little bit ahead. So if you were in a position lower to your knees, gazing 
a little bit ahead, so your neck is neutral, your spine is long, you are going to rock back towards your heels, you're going to plant your hands, you're going to use your hands to pull yourself back up. So there's no change in position in the spine. Staying with this pattern for a moment. Taking one more there. Go ahead and turn it over onto your left or right hand side, it doesn't matter which. You're going to bend your knees so that they're at about a 45 degree angle to your body. So your knee is about a 45 degree angle to your hip. Your shoulder and your elbow are in line. You're going to take your, so my left elbow is down, so I'm going to take my right hand. I'm going to lift my right uh, upper rib area away from my arm. This is going to help me get the shoulder blade and the shoulder in a good position. So, and it's going to lengthen my spine. So ideally, right, we should have this nice straight line right across the pelvis, even though we're on our sides. So we're not here, we're not here, everything is level. Keeping this position, got that, got that. You're gonna take the right hand, you have two options here. You can either stay in this position, pressing this elbow down, this knee down, and lifting this arm, keeping a neutral shoulder position. So none of that, or to make it more complex, you can lift up, float the top leg, and lift the arm. Whichever you prefer. Staying with a smooth and steady breathing, you're gonna do about five of those. Lower down and then switch sides. So same thing, start here, lift, this is down, neck, right, the head's in line with the spine, so you're neutral here. Options, you can either stay here, you can float the arm, or if you want more of a challenge, really press into this elbow, so you wanna make sure you don't collapse through there. You're keeping this lift away as you lift the arm up. Shoulder relax, smooth and steady. Taking one more there. From here, you're going to gently come on up into a standing position. If you have something to hold on to, a beam or a squat rack, it works really well. For the final thing, especially if you're working towards hanging, you're going to take your right hand, you're going to stand perpendicular to the beam. You're going to hold on to it. You're going to let that shoulder come down. You're going to let that shoulder blade wrap slightly around, so we're not protracted or retracted, we're just neutral. The shoulder blade is sitting on the spine. You're going to lengthen up and you're going to walk fairly close, or maybe not, depending on where you're at. And you're just going to hang. So you're staying integrated, right, through this shoulder as you hang on the rack. It's going to prepare you, hang out here for a while, and then you can switch sides. And that's going to prepare you if you get to the point where you want to hang and start practicing one arm stuff. Right? Which our shoulder is designed to do, but you have to work up towards it. So hopefully that sequence was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know and have a wonderful day. Thank you.